was not a biblical terrorist. The fixation on the Bible did not exist in his time. Neither did the Bible. <laughs> so if we follow his example, we also will learn to read the Bible as a living text, open to multiple interpretations. It should have room for reinterpretations as the culture becomes something other than what the culture was when it was written. And I think Jesus was using a bigger group of religious texts. The canon was not as narrow and as all or nothing during the time of Jesus. I'm told he quoted as scripture some texts that we'd call extra-biblical. Okay. Jesus was relying often upon shared memory. It may be that he was quoting passages as they were taught to him by a religious mentor. He had a Jewish education. He had learned the Torah from men who were just as flawed as today's pastors and professors. Jesus didn't have a pocket Bible or a Torah app to reference, and he didn't seem overly concerned by that fact either. A verbatim handle on scripture wasn't on his radar. Huh. And isn't it strange that that's all our radar picks up on these days? <laughs> Many wonder why Jesus did not write any books or why anything he may have written was not preserved. Conspiracy theorists suggests his texts were hidden for nefarious reasons. <laughs> of course they would. Given the importance of the written word, say, uh, and you know that's sarcasm, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Given the importance of the written word, Second Timothy, it's natural to ask why Christ didn't record anything in writing. And I feel the most likely reason relates to humanity's habit over overemphasizing certain things and ideas while losing sight of the larger picture. Now let me change gears a bit and get into my entire point, which is the inerrant doctrine and the idea of biblical authority. The doctrine of inerrancy is more post-biblical and even modern. It has been particularly influential among U.S. evangelicals who often appeal to the doctrine of inerrancy in arguments against gender equality, social justice, and other causes sought to violate God's infallible word. The doctrine of inerrancy took shape during the 19th and 20th centuries in the United States. Known as the Chicago Statement on Biblical Inerrancy, the statement was a response to emerging liberal or non-literal interpretations of the Bible. According to the statement, the Bible speaks with infallible divine authority in all matters upon which it touches. In short, the Bible is the final authority. And the Holy Bible is hailed by Christians as the greatest book in the world, with many believing it to be the inerrant Word of God. In other words, they are convinced that the Bible is not only God's Word, but is incapable of being wrong, and that it contains no errors. This belief has been drummed into the heads of Christians and those targeted for conversion for centuries. I was one of those young skulls of mush. We can neither prove nor disprove that the writers of the Bible were inspired by God. However, we ought to be honest and admit that the Bible contains errors, contradictions, and inconsistencies. After all, the books contained within the Bible were written by men who are fallible and therefore prone to error. Bearing this in mind, it is disingenuous to know that all the chapters in the Bible were written by human hands and insist that the documentations are perfect. Brings to mind that joke about the monk in the basement. It says, Cele right. celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We need to remember that when these men wrote the stories, their intention was not for them to be part of a monolithic text. It was long after Jesus' death that these writings, in different languages, were gathered, assembled, and bound together as the Bible. We do not know all the writers of the books of the Bible, and we do not know their intentions or agendas when they put pen to paper. It is a fact that the Bible has contradictions, and the list is long. And look, the acceptance of the concept of biblical inerrancy has caused much harm. The Bible has been used to indoctrinate children and other vulnerable individuals with laws, rules, and codes of conduct based on biblical writings, all under the assumption that the pages of the book contain the inerrant word of God. 
and as a result, people have been sent on unnecessary guilt trips, denying life-saving medical interventions, disowned by their families, marginalized by societies, unjustly punished, imprisoned, and even executed based on material in the Bible thought to be edicts issued directly from the Almighty. Well, let me stress errors in the Bible do not mean that God does not exist or that people should abandon Christianity. However, by acknowledging that these discrepancies do exist, believers should be mindful of using their beliefs to dictate how the lives of others should be lived. And Jesus did say, Do unto others as you would have them do unto you.